Okay, well, hello everyone. This is uh, Professor Sam Lanzafami again. Uh, this time we're going to be talking a little bit about transaction analysis. We're going back to chapter one, but this time I want to look at it from the point of view of a corporation instead of a non-corporation like we did in my very first video. So as you can tell from the titles at the top, uh, we have assets, cash, accounts receivable, supplies, equipment. Under liabilities, we have notes payable and accounts payable. Uh, then under owner's equity, however, we no longer have capital and drawing. We now have common stock and dividends. So that's really the main change. You'll see that the majority of this is the same as it was under a non-corporation. The only difference is now we're looking at it from a corporation from a corporation standpoint and two new terms uh, are involved here and that's common stock and dividends another one could be retained earnings but in my example uh, I'm not using it for this particular one okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some sample questions I've actually written them down below here so if I just scroll down for a second you'll see the transactions that I'll be working off of so if you want to take a quick picture of that you know, so that it's easier to follow as I go through these transactions. So I'm not going to be scrolling up and down uh, to get them. So if you want to take a quick pick, this way you have a copy of these transactions, and then we're going to go forward from here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through these first set of transactions here. Uh, what we're going to do is simply do the transaction analysis. Uh, we're not going to do the financial statements, just stick to the uh, transaction analysis piece. Okay, so on May 1st, stockholders invested $5,000 in the business in exchange for common stock. So in a situation like this, $5,000 worth of cash is going up and your common stock account is going up. So remember a couple of little tidbits here. Uh, assets, these guys right here can go up and down as you're entering numbers in these columns. Same thing with liabilities, they too can go up and down. But the four equity accounts, I refer to these as my shopping cart accounts. The shopping cart accounts only go up. So every time I put a number under capital, I'm adding it to the previous total. Same thing with dividends. Every time I put a number in dividends, it's going to be added to the previous total. Same thing with revenue. Same thing with expenses. So these four always go up. So think of them as like filling in a shopping cart. You're just piling stuff into the shopping cart. All right. We're not putting anything back on the shelves. So first move you have to make is always a positive one. So you can never have a negative balance in any of these accounts. So that's why cash is a positive and common stock is a positive. In addition to that, remember that we need to have a minimum of two moves every time we do this. So we always have to have two moves. Could be three, could be four. It's gotta be at least two. If you just put 5,000 somewhere, and don't put another 5,000 somewhere else, it's wrong. This thing has to balance as you go through it. Now, when you do your two moves, they could be like what we just did, one on each side, or it could be a situation where you have the two 5,000s on the same side, maybe on the left side, maybe on the right side, but the bottom line is that uh, you must always have a minimum of two moves, okay? If you see a transaction with the word paid, so let's just write these down, minimum of two moves. Uh, if you see the word paid in a transaction, one of your moves is cash, and cash will go down. Okay. Um, first move, as I said before, in any column must be positive. So you can never have a negative balance, nor can you start with a negative balance. We're always doing the books from the company's eyes. Okay, always doing the books from the company's eyes, not from the stockholders, not from any individual owner. It's always from the company's eyes. Okay, I think that's good enough for right now enough for us to continue on uh, doing this problem. What I've done is I've also created a little calculator here on the right. So as we are updating our balances after every transaction on this yellow row, 
the calculator is going to let us know if we are in balance. Okay. So here are my two moves. I'm doing all of my transactions in the in the white row. And as each uh, move is completed, I want to double check now that I'm in balance. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to copy my answer from cash. So now it shows that I have a balance of 5,000. I don't have a balance in any of these other accounts, other assets. I don't have any liabilities yet. So I'll bring down the 5,000. We'll just get rid of those here real quick. And let's see, we have no dividends as of yet. We have no revenue as of yet. And we have no expenses as of yet. So right now you can see, according to our calculator, that I've got 5,000 on the left, 5,000 on the right. We're in balance. So I'm constantly updating my balance row after every transaction. Okay, so now let's do May 2nd. May 2nd says purchased equipment for $10,000, paid $1,000 down, and then signed a note for the balance of $9,000. So this one's a tough one right off the bat because this one requires three moves. So let me repeat the question. We purchased equipment for $10,000. So we're going to go to our equipment. Again, we're working on the white row where the date is. And we're putting $10,000 in the equipment spot. According to the transaction, it says we paid $1,000 in cash. So our cash is going to go down by $1,000. Okay. So let's put a negative $1,000 in there. Oops. Hang on a second. It's giving me a little fit here. Excuse me. That's probably why. Let's see if that takes care of it. There we go. Didn't I didn't have the numlock button clicked on. Okay, so again, I bought $10,000 worth of equipment. My cash has decreased by 1000 because I put $1,000 down. But then they said I signed a note for the balance. So I'm going to go to notes payable, and I'm going to put $9,000 in that spot. So... Uh, by the time I'm done with this transaction, you will notice that uh, on the left side, my left side here where the assets are, went up by 10, down by 1. The overall effect is my assets changed by 9,000 in the positive. And what's happening on this side? This side also changed by 9,000. So I should still be in balance when I fill, figure out my, my calculator uh, results here. So let's see here. 5,000 will add. A negative 1,000, so we're down to 4,000 in cash. We have no accounts receivables yet. We have no supplies yet, but we now have $10,000 worth of equipment. We now have $9,000 worth of debt. I still have no accounts payables. Let's just put uh, zero in there. And I still have $5,000 worth of stock, no dividends yet, no revenue yet, and no expenses yet. So as you can see from the calculator, uh, I've got 14000 on the left, 14000 on the right. Let's move on to the next transaction, which is on the 4th. And let's change this date. And on the 4th, it says paid $900 for office rent for the month. So we pay. Ding, 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 ding. Anytime you hear or see that word paid, you know your cash is going to go down. So cash is decreasing by 900 And we're paying uh, the rent for the month. Rent is an expense. So our expenses are going to go up. And I've created an extra column here just to track our expenses. So we're just going to write rent expense uh, next to that $900. Okay, so let's update our balances. So our cash is now going down to $3,100. I still have no receivables yet, no supplies yet. I do have some equipment valued at ten dollars I've got some debt, $9,000. I still have that 5,000 sitting there in common stock. 
unless the you know investors you know get put more money into the business you're not going to see much change in that stock account so it pretty much goes dormant notice that our calculator is in balance and on the left side we've got 131 on the right side we've got 131 let's do the next transaction which is the 8th and on the 8th, it says, perform $2,000 worth of services for customers for cash. So every time you do whatever you do for a living, whenever you do it, it's revenue. So we did a $2,000 job. So my revenue is going to go up by $2,000. And because we got paid in cash, we received the cash, our cash is going to go up. So there's our two moves. Again, so far... We've had something on one side and something on the other side, but it doesn't always work that way. So let's update our balances. Our cash is now up to 5100 and accounts receivable is zero. Supplies is zero. Equipment is 10000 There we go. A little hesitation there on the keyboard. Don't know why. Get rid of these. Okay. We have $9,000 worth of debt. Still no accounts payable, another type of debt. Notice how steady our stock is. Still haven't paid any dividends to stockholders. Revenue is at $2,000 and our expenses are at $900. So, a question that I typically ask at this point is, if I were to ask you, does this company have a net income or a net loss at this stage of the game, what's your guess? Do they have a profit or are they losing in essence? And if you said a profit, you are right. And basically when you're asked a question about profitability, you're focusing on just the revenue and the expenses. So right now the company has earned 2000 in revenue and they've got 900 worth of expenses. So they are currently in the black by 1100 They were originally in the red. Notice we didn't have any revenue originally, and we had 900 of expenses. So we were 900 in the red or a $900 loss. But then we performed the service, and now we're operating in the black. And that's where we prefer to be. So right now, if we were to end right here, this company would be happy because they have a net income of $1,100. All right, next transaction is on the 9th. And on the 9th, it says performed $8,000 worth of services. But this time, we did the, the jobs on account. So the first thing, we did an $8,000 job. So our revenue is going to go up by $8,000. And because we didn't collect the cash, we're going to put this $8,000 temporarily into accounts receivable. Just do one other thing here. Let's freeze these panes so this way we keep our headings. Okay, so taking a look at our balances now, we still have 5,100 in cash. I now have $8,000 worth of accounts receivable. That is money I'm waiting to receive from my customers. <coughs> Excuse me, I have no supplies. I still have my $10,000 worth of equipment, $9,000 worth of notes payable, nothing in accounts payable, $5,000 worth of stock, nothing in dividends. Now my revenue, really into the black, I'm at $10,000 worth of revenue, and my expenses are still at $900. So now I'm in the black or net income, $9,100, just comparing these two to each other. So again, when analyzing, you know, revenue, uh, when, when, when analyzing whether or not a company has net income or net loss, we are looking at the revenues and the expenses. Okay. All right. Next transaction is on the 11th. And on the 11th, it says, we bought some, plot, bought some supplies on account for $300. Okay. So bought supplies for $300. So. Go to your supplies account, and our asset's going to go up by 300, and our cash is going to go down by 300. So look at that. We have a situation where both moves were on the left-hand side. 
So whenever they happen on the left-hand side, one has to be a positive, one has to be a negative. Okay? And in other words, they have to offset each other. So I'm going to predict that our calculator will not change at all in terms of total because this side isn't changing at all. So hopefully this side is still saying 231. So let's see what we have here. 5100, subtract out that 300. We're now down to 4800 in cash. I have $8,000 worth of accounts receivable, money that I'm waiting to collect. $300 worth of supplies. Let's get rid of those. $10,000 worth of equipment. I've got $9,000 worth of note payable debt. I have no debt of accounts payable. There's that $5,000 worth of stock still sitting there doing nothing. And then no dividends yet. $10,000 worth of revenue. $900 worth of expenses. And notice that our profitability did not change at all from that transaction. In order for your profitability to change, you need something under revenue or expense. But notice, as predicted, the total, 23.1, just like it was on the previous line. So over here, basically, we had an exchange of assets. We turned one asset into another asset, just moved it around. Okay, next transaction is the 15th. And on the 15th, it says paid $400 for advertising. Paid, ding, 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 ding. So remember, whenever you see that word paid, cash is going to go down. And why is it going down? Because we're making a payment for advertising. Advertising is an expense. Expenses always go up. Remember, it's one of those shopping cart accounts. And I'm going to label it here for future use. And that transaction is done. So let's update our balances. So now in cash, we are down to 4400 The other assets, no change. Our liabilities did not change, our common stock did not change, our dividends did not change, our revenue did not change, but our expenses went up. So that's going to kind of make a dent into our profitability. So now we have less profit than we had in the previous transaction, but we're still doing really well. Okay, next transaction is on the 22nd. And on the 22nd, it says, uh, made a $1,000 payment on the note. So remember that note payable that we uh, signed off on, basically, that we promised to pay? Well, we're now paying $1,000. So our cash is going to go down by 1000 Cash is getting really low. And our note payable is going to go down by 1000 because we're making a payment on our debt. So our debt's going to decrease. So our cash is now down to 3400 This company's probably a little bit worried that the cash is getting that low. Hopefully some money's coming soon. And the other assets, no change. Our debt has gone from 9000 down to 8000 And we still have no accounts payable yet. Common stock still holding steady at 5000 dividends at zero, and then our revenue and expenses have not changed. So this transaction uh, did not affect our profitability. Next transa transaction is on the 25th. We collected some money. Yay, we needed some money. So it says we collected $2,000 on account from the customers from May 9th. So May 9th happens to be at the top of the screen. Remember when we did that $8,000 job? And we did the job, but the customers didn't give us the money. We billed them. So they're giving us 2000 of that. So maybe they're paying us 2000 at a time. Who knows? So our cash is going to go up by 2000 Turn that to a different color here. And our accounts receivable is going to go down by 2000 So we would hope, we're hoping that that accounts receivable will eventually be completely paid off because we could use that money. All right, so notice the two moves were on the left-hand side again, and whenever that happens, one better be a positive, one better be a negative, and it is. So our cash 
is now back up to a decent standing. We're at 5,400. We're only expecting now to collect 6,000 from that customer. So if I don't, you know, put that 2,000 in that account, I'm going to rebuild that customer for 10 grand. And I don't think they're going to be very happy with me. And they're like, hey, I just paid you 2,000. What do you mean I still owe you the eight? So we want to make sure that we credit that customer's account properly. So updating all these balances, again, that transaction did not affect profitability. And because the two moves were on the same side, uh, notice that our calculator totals remain the same. Okay, next transaction's on the 26th. <clears throat> and on the 26th, it says paid a dividend of $500 to the stockholders. All right, so dividends is going to go up. Remember, that's one of the shopping cart accounts. And every time you use a shopping cart account, it always goes up. But if we're making a payment to the stockholders, giving them some money for their investment, our cash is going down. So cash is decreasing in this situation. Dividends went up, cash goes down. So our balance in cash is now down to $4,900. The remaining assets, no change. So every time I do my transaction analysis, I then update my balances as I go. Okay. <clears throat> Next transaction is on the 29th. This one says paid $1,600 for employee salaries. Ding, ding, ding. There's that word paid again. So our cash is going to go down by $1,600. And if we're paying salaries, that means that's an expense. Our expense account is going to go up. So we're going to label that as salary expense. Okay, so let's update our balances. Cash is getting a little bit low again. Let me change that to black, by the way. I don't want anyone to think we were in the negative there for a second. Okay, so looking at all these other assets, no change. Our debt, 8,000, still don't have any accounts payable. Accounts payable is an informal version of a note payable. A note is typically when you're dealing with a bank, like you, you know, uh, you owe money for a student loan or a mortgage or a car. That's typically when you use a note. If you use your charge card or you buy something from the store, you buy that on account. So account a lot less formal than something that's a note. Okay, so uh, let's make sure our balances work here. It looks like I'm a little bit off. Let's see where I made a mistake here. Because it's saying that we're off here. So 3,300, Oh, that's why I forgot to bring down this $500 from before. Do that here as well. <clears throat> there we go. So now we are in balance. Okay, so a couple more transactions and we're done. Now it is May 30th and it says we paid $100 on account. And that one really is hard to do because we never did one on account. So let's just pay, get, make a payment on the note. So we'll just say that that's an error in the way that's written. So paid $100 on account. That really will say paid 100 on the note. Okay, so if we're making a payment of $100, our note payable will go down by 100, and our cash is going to go down by 100. So good to pay off our debt as quickly as we can. This way, we incur less interest down the road. So our new balance in cash is now 3200 These other accounts, no change, at least in the assets. <clears throat> our balance in our notes payable, 
is now down to 7,900. Still don't have anything on account. $5,000 worth of common stock, $500 worth of dividends. Uh oh, what did I do? I shrunk the screen accidentally. Sorry about that. There we go. <clears throat> Revenue is still $10,000. And your expenses, $2,900. Okay. And you can see from the calculator that we are in balance. One last transaction and we're done. This last one says we performed a service for customers for $10,000 of which we collected $3,000 and the balance is owed to us. So this sounds like another three move scenario. So I did a $10,000 job, doubled my revenue right in one shot and then we collected $3,000 And the rest we're waiting to collect. So that means there's still $7,000 that we need to see down the road. Okay, so three moves in that situation. Okay, so $3,200 plus $3,000. We really needed that cash. So now we're at an all-time high so far for this company. So looking at the previous balances, yeah, we're up to $6,200. We're waiting to collect $13,000. I have $300 worth of supplies. I have $10,000 worth of equipment. $7,900 worth of notes payable. Haven't incurred any debts on account yet. At least this month, $5,000 worth of common stock. $500 worth of dividends. My revenues have gone from ten dollars to $20,000. And my expenses stay and hold firm at $2,900. Okay, so those are the transactions. I hope that that was very helpful for you. Uh, one last thing before we go, let's take a look at our final answers and our revenue and expenses. So if we want to figure out, did this company have a net income or a net loss? It's definitely a net income. And the way we figure that out is we take our revenue and we subtract our expenses. So that would mean that our net income is 20,000 minus the 2,900. This company right now is in the black, 17,1. Okay, well, I thought, I hope that this was very helpful for you. Again, this is Professor Sam Lansafame, and uh, look, look for more of my videos. I've got about 20 of them or so right now, and more accounting principles videos. Uh, coming down the road. All right, you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.